because the culture is so predominantly progressive, left-leaning Catholics tend to go too far in the absorbing culture into Catholicism. And then because conservatives tend to be a little against the culture because the culture is hostile to conservatism, Mm -hmm. they tend to go in the opposite direction of and they, they tend to overemphasize the Catholicism excises the bad. And so they end up getting yeah. rid of perfectly fine things. And the, the progressive left tends to absorb not good things, you know? Welcome to the Crunch. The only podcast that's in a fast car. It's your boy, Ethan. And I'm Patrick. Did you know that song is sung by a woman? What the fa- you you got a fast car and I got a ticket to g- get it get it out of here. To get- <laughs> 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 me when I <laughs> me when I'm towing the car that's parked in my spot. I got a ticket to get this out of here. Get out of here. Gotta, yeah. Uh, yeah. Welcome to the Crunch. Um, this is a podcast where Ethan and I are two f- buddies who've been talking to each other about balls for years. We two two fellas. We, uh, we have a conversation every week about Catholicism, a topic about Catholic life, and mostly we goof off while we do it. That's really the main point. But yep. uh, we hope more people have conversations like this, and we're glad you're here hanging out with us. Um, Ethan. Yeah. When was the first time you heard Tracy Chapman's Fast Car, and how yeah. long did you cry? You gotta make a decision. Uh, I actually don't think I've ever heard the original version of the song. Really? I have I have heard like a a a mild uh, EDM sort of remix mm. by I think an artist called it's like it's not Jet Blue the Airlines but it's like some kind of Jonas Blue Jonas Blue that's the one right yeah. yeah 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 and I when I was a when I worked at the University of Tulsa as a focus missionary uh, I was usually in charge of the music because my male teammate Alexander had no cultural competency generally when it came to like modern music. And then the other girls on my team, uh, they just didn't want the responsibility. And so it would come to me and I would pick, he's a monk now. So he doesn't need, he he has a monk, but he somehow listens to this podcast on a regular basis and is in the discord. So if you could, his name isn't Alexander anymore. So, and I forget his full legal title (laughs) at the moment. (laughs) Brother Monsignor, Brother Esquire. Brother um, Esquire of the Blessed Sacrament. Yeah. Uh, Something like would, that. It would have been really nice if he was just Brother Alexander. We could just keep it keep it simple for me. Too many names. Regardless, there was one time where we had like this, uh, it was an activities fair. So everybody was going around and you could go to the, oh, I want to be in the Frisbee Club. Let me sign up on the, oh, I want to be in the in the native American trans activist club, I'm going to, you know, sign up for this. And then the Catholic club was right there, right next to nice. in between, right in those between two. the Frisbees and the, and the, and the, and the gay Indians. Sorry. Yes. I can't. <laughs> uh, you're just, you're just really going to get canceled every week now for some. I know. I, I was like, I'm related on from Israel. Call. And then, <laughs> Israel. No, you Hispanics. can say that now. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's come full circle. It's come it has full come full circle. Ever not, since we, not ever since we renamed them to the Cleveland Guardians, everyone's like, actually, Indians wasn't that bad. I don't. Yeah, think. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Um, so we were there, and I had the speaker, and I didn't. So the problem was is that secretly everybody thought that I knew what to do, but I didn't. I don't know any popular music at all. Yes. I I only listen to Dutch <laughs> Dutch hard Dutch. style. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh and so i but i knew that song and so i put it on repeat and we listened to it for like two hours and no one noticed and no, no one noticed and if they did no one stopped me so it's just that song Same. is stuck in my head but it was nice because it just kind of so i've never listened to tracy chapman sing it i didn't listen when luke bryan sang it at the VMAs or whatever he's saying it at this year with Tracy Chapman yeah. with Tracy Chapman. Cause I thought she yeah. was dead. I thought she was in the fast car to the next life. Yeah, no, she, she's in the regular car. She was uh, driving a Ford rigor mortis up to heaven <laughs> 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 to receive that eternal crown, Victoria. Indeed. Wow. All the cars in heaven are crown Victorias. <laughs> they just, all of them are. Yeah. Because that is the best car. 
when you think about it. The Crown Vic. Oh yeah. Gosh, what other car? A boat. Just a boat. That was a that was the era in America of law and order. You know. Oh we yeah. Were, we were. You could stop them and frisk them any day you wanted. Any, any, <laughs> any, way, any way to Wednesday. Yeah. You could... <laughs> Getting stopped and frisked in heaven to see if you brought any like rocks with you. <laughs> yeah, you can't bring those. Back. You got any? Got any minerals yeah. in that robe? You're supposed to leave that down there. It's like in Hawaii where you can't take yeah. sand off the beach, you know, mm-hmm. but everybody does it anyway. You try to bring me, fruit because you really like fruit. Yeah, but you can't. they got better fruit up there. Yeah, they got better fruit in Hawaii. They got trees that grow in clouds, and we think that we'll need mangoes. Ridiculous. Was it was it faith. you? Was it what? you and was it you guys and me and Phoebe that were having a fight about whether things grow naturally in Hawaii, or was that another couple friend of ours? I was arguing oh, was with another you, couple friend of ours. I was arguing with you about whether or not things grew in Florida. Like I disagreed on yeah. the coconut, but that was a different. I think that was in the bonus. Episode. So there's no there's no plants that are native to Hawaii. That's like a that's a thing that I was told when I was there. That just right? can't that's be true. Thing that I was told that I and that's can't. what my friends said. <laughs> and they they like we had this big fight at dinner. We're like that can't. I'm like I'm like I agree with you because I know there's plants that aren't found anywhere else besides Hawaii. So that can't like. When was the last time you saw a taro root? somewhere outside of the islands in that's what uh, i thought papua new guinea they have the taro root and that's one of the reasons why that civilization didn't advance according to jared diamond leftist historical hack who wrote guns germs and steel his we had i had to watch a whole video in college about the taro root and about how the papua new guineans were unable to develop agriculture because (laughs) because all they had was hogs and the taro root to eat and uh, I don't know. I thought it was rather reductive. I think maybe it's because so they lived on an has island. Taro pie, by the way. I don't know really? if you knew this. Yes. McDonald's has a taro pie. Yeah, but it's only available in the in Hawaii? Polynesian in the Polynesian places. Polynesian places. They should do that. It's whack that you go to other yeah Poly. places. <laughs> um, it's whack that you can go to other places in the world. And they have like, you can get McDonald's sushi or you can get McDonald's Mm -hmm. whatever. But in America, which is basically just a large economic zone masquerading as a country with lots of different (laughs) regions and uh, foods, it's the same all the the way. We don't get any, there's no variation. From sea to shining sea. From sea to, there should be lobster in Boston at McDonald's. I should be able to get in Kansas. I should be able to get a a McDonald's loaf of bread. You know, (laughs) in Texas, you should be able to get a McDonald's steak, a McDonald's brisket. In in Florida, you should be able to get a McDonald's coconut, (laughs) or a McDonald's heroin needle. That that also that works for a lot of places. Actually, it does work for a lot of places like Pennsylvania, Uh New Jersey, Washington D.C. Man, White House. There's a lot of sad things happening in this country. Yeah, what's the deal I, with that, dude? I had a, I had a crazy conversation today. You ever like you ever like yeah. get you like get around like super Republican guys and you're just like you can feel yourself becoming more conservative. Yes, it's it, like it's osmosis. So fun. It's so great. <laughs> it's just like, they just, it's just like, like all of my just... my latent whiteness just like powers up. I feel like yeah, Mario yeah. when he gets he's, another mushroom. I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking to him. I'm talking to him. And he's like. He's like. He's like. Gas, gas shouldn't be three forty nine. <laughs> gas is like water; it should be twenty cents a gallon. I was like, "Hell yeah, Richard!" Damn You're right, right, brother. It should be, and we need to put Trump back in office, and he'll bring gas down to twenty cents mm-hmm. by getting rid of illegal immigrants. It'll bring the gas down. Do you see that Joe it. depleted the Strategic Petroleum Reserve and is refusing to replenish it because it would increase gas prices in an election year? How did he deplete it? What did he he just used it all up. <laughs> like for personally? His, like, yeah, for, his, for his golf <laughs> trips. <laughs> I just I like I like the image of him depleting and being like, uh uh-uh, uh, I'm not refilling it. Uh uh-uh, uh, no sir. And they're like trying to get him with a spoon, like, come on, Joe, refill it. He's like, uh uh-uh, all done. Mm-mm, all done. Nope, not you know, do it. If you're trying to feed your son his vegetables. I do try to yeah. We need yeah. we need to we need to we need to work a little harder on that bit of ours where if you fed if you fed Joe 
uh, Ozempic. Ozempic. He waste away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta we gotta figure out the best way to. I told the the version of it at the bonfire last night of the if Joe Biden took Ozempic, he would look like the Nazis at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. One guy laughed, but the other three were just kind of like ah. And so it's like okay, that didn't hit enough cultural. Yeah knowledge no that was you know? that was mine yours the end game one was funnier end game the, one was the, funnier the yeah dust, he's gonna look it's uh you just you do a picture of the the still of ebony maw wasting away at the end of end game yeah. you say this is what would happen if you gave joe biden ozempic that's yes. perfect it's pretty that's good. all you need yeah i'm trying to think of other times in history where people have dissolved you know pompeii pompeii or like to me, it's not like if you gave Joe Biden Ozempic, I don't think he would dissolve. I think it's like like he would like a black hole would form inside of him, and he would kind of like be fold in on himself. It's like a sequel, 4D. It's a sequel to it's a sequel yeah. to if you give a mouse a cookie. <laughs> if you, if you, if, with Joe, <laughs> if you give Joe Ozempic, <laughs> oh, it would man. be like the inside of Joe would be the newest Christopher Nolan movie. Like there would be a singularity inside of yeah. him that would just need mass and light. You know, and people would be like, I don't get it. Yeah. They would. I don't understand. The dialogue was really, yeah, <laughs> he would say that he'd be up there. Like, I got, I got a rather than hole inside. I bet you in the same way that regular. Anyway. And then everyone would be like, I don't understand <laughs> what they were saying. The volume was not right in the theaters. I don't understand. It's really? Yeah, I think they messed it up or something. It was Dolby like it was Dolby like nine point three, and I didn't know you could even do that. I think more people need to understand that movies are not designed for you to uh, understand everything. They're meant for you to be experienced, you know. And mm -hmm. and the fact that I know that makes me better than most people. I am of the opinion that most people should be able to enjoy a movie that is mass distributed via cinema <laughs> yeah I i'm of that you, opinion. i think if you walk out of a christopher nolan movie and you say i i'm confused you shouldn't be allowed to vote i think that should be our <laughs> litmus test yeah you can yeah, stand yeah. in line to vote and they do a public screening of tenant and then they ask you <laughs> a little clipboard like did you get it yes please this way sir did you get it Proceed. no escorted out of the building <laughs> yeah and and people would answer honestly because people would. love to tell you they didn't get movies yeah. they love to tell on themselves even they better. Like, I didn't understand that at all. It was very confusing. It's like, yes, I'm sure that mm -hmm. I'm sure that this movie that people spent millions of dollars to produce and yes. went through several rounds of editing, shooting, filming, and releasing, and it's you. It's their fault that it's you their don't. Fault. Get it's it. not you. Yeah. yeah, it's them. It's not you. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> if they say no, then they get escorted to dummy voting machines that aren't plugged in, and so they get to like <laughs> press it and they get to feel like they've yeah. done something, but it's it's really not. Um. I think I do think Christopher it's Nolan like the is little a good... button on the child lock on yeah. our trash can. That well, it's makes like it handing, it's like, like handing the controller that's not plugged in to your little brother. Yeah, it's the wheel on the on the on the shopping cart. Yeah, yeah, yeah wow. that's what it is. That's yeah. fun. They don't that really is have basically those what voting is. It's, it's yeah the for the whole American <laughs> public for everyone. It's us. We're in the shopping cart and we're like, yeah. I want to go this way. And sometimes we do. And we're like, mm -hmm. Oh wow. We have, I have so much power, but really it's just, you know, mom's low on fabric softener. And you just happen to pick the right aisle. It's crazy that the Democrats bragged about how they rigged the 2020 presidential election for Joe Biden. And like just publicly in op-eds and everyone was just <laughs> like, all right, okay <laughs> okay sounds, sounds good. good you're telling me you did it because you had to oh okay um, cool 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 sweet we should verify 2020 as our campaign <gasps> suggested we should we should That's, who that was really funny that was really fun i wish we had the full updated uh banner of everybody yeah, we really need to get Uncle Tito back on the podcast. We really need to get Hillary Duff and Chuck E. Cheese. Now with that, that would we came, we were a couple years too early with the Verify 2020 because I think now if we could go back, we could do AI voices for them and we could do fake interviews with Uncle Tito and Mitchell Musso and and Condoleezza Rice and Rutherford B. I Hayes don't know. I don't know. I don't know if the market for AI Condoleezza is, is, I don't think someone is, I don't think anyone's gotten that one yet. We might have to custom create, we might have to commission that one ourselves. Yeah. Go on you to know? Fiverr. I need someone to make me a voice model for Condoleezza Rice. In today. No reason. Personal Please. reason. 
Thank you. <laughs> For personal reasons, not sexual in big brackets. <laughs> my my uh, my my Condoleezza, my AI generated Condoleezza Rice voice was not for sexual purposes t-shirt is raising a lot of questions art <laughs> answered by the t-shirt <laughs> what is that from what is that what really are you big t- that's a that's a that's a twitter thing the nice. uh my i didn't kill my wife t-shirt is raising a lot of questions already answered by the t-shirt by the t-shirt yeah that's you funny. know or something that's like that good. it's like it's yeah. on the t-shirt for those of you that don't know in 2019 and 2020 patrick and i ran a campaign to try and get verified on twitter which ended up being a moot point because now you can just pay for it and get verified. But And uh, we have. And we have. It was called Verify criticism. 2020. It was called Verify 2020. Because and we, we wanted would, to get verified in 2020. And every week we would have a new campaign endorsement uh, from various persons, fictional and non-fictional, including and people like... And also statues. Including people like Condoleezza Rice, the Crazy Horse statue, and Not even Crazy the... Not Crazy Horse, the statue. The statue, yeah. And even the the buff Yao Ming from the Arthur cartoon. <laughs> you mean Yo-Yo Ma? What did I say? I you said, said Yao, Yao Ming. Ming. <laughs> oh, no. I did mean to say Yo-Yo Ma. That was a mistake. Yeah. The Yo-Yo, fair, not Yo-Yo Ma. Yo-Yo Ma fair, from the Arthur cartoon. <laughs> a lot of the same letters in, the, in both the Yao Correct. Ming and Yo-Yo Ma. Correct. And when Yo-Yo Ma gets buff in the Arthur cartoon and beats up another musician... He kind of is as tall as Yao Ming would be in universe. Yes, and so I think indeed. I was thinking I think tall. It's fair. Yeah. I think it's fair. Please don't I, cancel me. I think you're I think you're okay. All right. I'm we're, I'm we're one anyway. we're one and one on racial on, screw ups on... today. <laughs> it's like it's twenty twelve again. You know, we're just mm-hmm. anyway. The people yes, so Verify twenty twenty was an unrelated to election fraud yeah. post. But then someone found the campaign. And was like, hey, guys, were you like super into election truthism <laughs> no. for a while? And I was like, no, 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 no. No, we had, different. <laughs> we had diff- some different ideas about society. Um, we thought that the election gosh. was rigged and that Uncle Tito from the Rocket hit- Power Nickelodeon show Rocket Power would believe us. Yeah. I miss Uncle Tito. I bet that show sucks. Like if we go back and watch it now, it probably is a terrible show. There's no there's no renaissance of rocket power. You know, people no. have SpongeBob memes, people have been, you know, hitting up Rugrats again. People have been really? binge watching Airbender, you know. Yeah. Um people aren't rewatching Rocket Power. It was it was in the era where Tony Hawk was like at his peak. And so the Nickelodeon was like yeah. We need Zeke and Luther. Different time, I think, but it was. You know, yeah, like we need to. We need to skateboard. There, we need to shred. I, I, I know we said a couple of weeks ago that we need to do an "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia" watch along. I don't think anybody would be a fan of that, but I think if we did do like a, a you know, Nickelodeon all time, you know, shows like if we did Avatar, if we did iCarly, if we did Drake and Josh, despite what is being said about Dan Schneider online. Uh, I think that I uh, stand with Dan. <laughs> okay. One foot firmly planted. I I'm just kidding. I'm trying That's to make funny. a foot joke, but I yeah. don't stand. That was a joke everyone. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm kidding. Very there, clearly. I, we've all seen person. the pictures of you two in the hot tub together. <laughs> oh man. I think Those that would be kids. good. I know yeah. they are poor kids, but I do think gosh. Yeah, what a time that would be. Maybe this summer. Maybe this summer we soft launch a a Drake and Josh pod, you and me, and we stay up, I, we stay up late on Friday nights, and we get we get to have a little drink, and we and we enjoy the fruits of our labor with one yeah. another. We sit back, we crack open a cold one, and yeah. we enjoy childhood again. Wow, just Doesn't like the nice? old days, drinking yeah. alcohol and watching Drake and Josh. That's what I did. For a time, oh, yeah. when when I was twenty one, I did that, and I was oh, a yeah? child then. So that's fair. Yeah, now I'm an adult and I have responsibility. I when I was twenty one, I watched all of Everybody Loves Raymond. Wow. Yeah. I really liked that show. Did you watch Everybody Loves Raymond? What does he say? What's his wife's name? Yeah, De- Deborah. Deborah. That's what it is. Deborah follows me on Twitter. 
You're joking. No, I, what's her, I, I what's her name? Patricia Heaton is a MUFO oh. of mine on Twitter. Is that really true? I didn't know Patricia Heaton was Deborah. Yes. I thought she was in uh, uh, the the middle. I thought that was her show. Pat- right? She did uh, Patricia oh, Heaton. She did. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. She follows me on Twitter. She follows you on Twitter. Her banner is uh, is a is a bold statement. I made a really. She does stand with Israel, and she is has she a grandkid. Jewish? Very cute. I don't think so. All no, of she's her posts. Cast. All of her posts are about Israel and Hamas. Interesting. I I had a conversation with her about. Um, I she followed me and I said immediately thank you for following me. Everybody loves Raymond is one of my favorite shows of all time, mostly because my grandparents are the spitting image of Frank and Marie. And she said you got me with that tweet about the priest not knowing your name. Nice. I, I I made a tweet a while ago about how Protestants are always complaining about how their pastors get really involved in their personal lives, and I'm like you guys should become Catholic. You could go to a church for 10 years and the priest won't even know your name. <laughs> Dude, I've been over to priests' homes. Like, I've had drinks with them in their living rooms. And they'll see me. They'll be like, hey, how's it going? And it's like, dude, dude we've we've bad. spent time together. I, I'm in a very fortunate situation where our parish priest is someone who knew my grandfather. Like, for yeah. years. And so he's like very close with our family and is leading our parish for the foreseeable future. It's a very good situation. I hope it never ends. I've never been in a good situation. Ever with your parish? (laughs) In general, ever. That's something that's something that people have been talking about recently is like what parishes need to be doing. Sure. Have you seen this? No. This episode of The Crunch is sponsored by Briefcase Marketing. If you work or know people who work or are a Catholic parish, you wow. need to listen to this. I okay. Hold on. I used to work at a church. You guys know this. Yeah. And uh-huh. website design is very important to me because it can be the difference between getting no phone calls from confused parents or a thousand phone calls from confused parents about when your events are or where forms are located. You know, it's... It's dangerous. I don't, I've never worked in a parish, but I have used many, 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 many parish websites yeah. where I've spent, I, you, you, it's like with a machete in the African jungle trying to find the mass times. <laughs> and I think we've all had that experience. Yeah. And they're and not think, updated. They're, and not, they're not updated and they're wrong. And you show up and the church is empty and you miss mass for that day. And then you call your dad and you're like, what do I do? And he says, I don't know. This is your fault. And it's just a mess. <laughs> And you get yourself in a big old mess. And what briefcase marketing does, they make sure that mess doesn't happen. You know, nobody they make sure has the to mess go through that. Happen. Yes. The Catholic Church, as you know, Ethan, needs beauty mm-hmm. in all of its areas, in, in the yes. physical word, world, but also in the digital world as well. And they focus I agree. on That's beauty. why I post pictures of myself online every day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I consume those photos. Indeed. I make sure to consume them every time. But, you know, it... It's hard. It's hard to know exactly what a website, a good website, looks like, especially if you're not a pro. It's yeah. there's a little there's a je ne sais quoi about mm. about website design. You know what I mean? Yes. Where like something that Deacon Deacon Steve, I know many Deacon Steves, wonderful people, but something that Deacon Steve thinks looks great is actually super hard to yeah. navigate and and yeah. is is obscene. But see see Dan over at Briefcase Marketing, he. He knows what looks good and is easily usable by old people and tw- toddlers alike. Yes, yes, and it's it, the nice thing is he's got experience. This is not just like a startup guy who doesn't no. know what he's doing. He's worked with small Catholic parishes all the way up to quarter billion dollar companies. So this is a guy who has a ton of experience and knows what he's doing. He's gonna be very professional. He's gonna set up your website. He's gonna help you walk through it. He's gonna ma- maintain the website for you. Do everything that needs to be done. So that the people that just want to know when mass is and just want to know where the fish fry is located on the parish grounds can find that information quickly and easily. I want to give you an example of something that he did for a parish Please. in Ohio that he can do for your parish. So if you want this at your parish, just you know, 
I'll, I'll give you a call to action at the end. Go to the crunchcast.com slash briefcase actually to, to, to sign your parish up. But uh, the oh. St. John Cantius had this old website that was just awful. It needed, it needed an update. It was one of the most beautiful churches in its area, but no one knew that because the mm-hmm. digital footprint of the parish was, Weak. was ugly. And so, uh, so Dan came in and he provided a professional photographer to capture the church the photos Whoa. were used across all marketing material, including the website. He designed CTA buttons to get people to sign up for events all throughout the website. So people that are thinking about joining the parish could could join and actually become a part of the community. And since that launch, uh, they've received nothing but positive feedback from website visitors. The um, They had an easier time navigating it. There more, more people were able to show up to parish events. And uh, they were able to quickly send updates without those spammy pop-ups you see sometimes on websites. So if you're if your parish is having that problem, uh, that's that's the problem that Dan can solve. So go to thecrunchcast.com slash briefcase, fill out a quick form, and Dan will get in touch with you, see how he can help you. It might be a big project, small project, whatever you need. Email Dan. Well, not email, sorry. Go to thecrunchcast.com slash briefcase. Professional podcaster, this guy right here. TheCrunchCast.com slash Briefcase, Briefcase Marketing. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Crunch. I, You and I both have a lot of opinions about parishes, right? I suppose we do. I, I've i been getting... So this might be because I'm in a very good parish situation, and I know not everyone is, and so I could be a little biased here. You are. But I think we should... I, I, I'm very much guilty of this. I don't know which I don't know which angle to approach this from. Yeah. But I posted I guess I saw a post where okay. Yeah, there's been a lot of posts on tw- why are, on, on why Twitter. Why are you stumbling over you just say what's on your mind, man? You're I don't know. It's, I don't feelings. know where to start cuz there's all that stuff with like the the altar was destroyed and uh-huh. people are like it's a good thing, it's a bad thing. Sure. And then other people are like the trads are ruining parishes. They are. I don't know. There's, there's, there's a, there's a contingent that I think exclusively exists online that is very much like about doctrinal purity when it comes to, right, ideological purity when it comes to trad, tradism, right. And someone from this camp said, you know, like, um, something along the lines of how that's why their parishes are empty or whatever. Like, oh, they're unwelcoming. That's why their parishes are empty. I was like, man, everyone knows that the same is true about the all are welcome, holding hands, bongo drum parishes. All of the parishes are empty. What are you talking about? You know? Do you think every parish is empty? No, 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 no. But I think it's like every every parish is experiencing... There are There are parishes all over the country that are experiencing... For every parish you find that's very hippy dippy and thriving there's another parish that's super trad and is thriving and it's just like mm-hmm. i'm getting a little tired of people saying ah yes if only the parish did this then people will show up to mass we do if this. only we did this then the church will be saved mm. and the question that we have not asked ourselves is what if jesus doesn't want your parish to thrive yeah. What if it's not God's will? I think it's entirely possible that God doesn't care for the parish system at all. Uh oh. Uh oh. Stinky. Uh, but I think it's <laughs> I think it's possible. Yeah. At least the parish system as currently constituted. Um maybe he maybe all he wanted was a bishop to travel around to say mass in people's houses and for everyone to just kind of gather pray give to the poor have gather kids in. yeah and then have priests i think that's kind mm-hmm. of that was kind of the intention but now it's not that it's not that at all it's a whole different thing not that there's anything wrong with the churches but it's maybe uh, i just don't have too much to say on the subject that's all my opinion is is like, yeah i mean you brought it up so i don't know i, I just i i get i a lot of people like to uh, people, including myself, like to pontificate about what's going to save the church. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. I've been in I've been in parishes that are thriving, and I've been in parishes that are dying. And mm-hmm. 
oftentimes the parishes that are dying are dying because they deserve it. And yes. oftentimes the parishes that are, th- and every time the parishes that are thriving are thriving despite the fact that they don't deserve it. <laughs> and yeah. so, I don't know. I, I think there are things that are important to keep in mind when it comes to the parish, but I, I don't, I'm getting a little tired of the, this will save your church thing. Yeah. You I'm know? right there with you. I don't think, I think everybody wants to have a thing that will save the thing because then that means they get to be right or they get to make money. And so, and this is true everywhere. It's like, this is what we need to do, need to do to save our country. This is what we need to do to save the Republican party. This is what we need to do to save our city. Like, I don't know, man. It feels like what we need to do is just be a regular old human beings. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Just be normal. I think just being normal. Ah, that's good. Well, Look at you. I think it's a better topic of conversation. I think so. Well, I was going to talk about that, but then you started talking about this parish thing, and I didn't. I don't know where that came from. So I was yeah, confused. Yeah, I'm just frustrated about it. But there's probably that's probably the extent to which I <laughs> it. I love a good, it, I love a good five minute podcast detour just to talk about something that Patrick doesn't like. <laughs> welcome to the crunch. I know. Welcome to the crunch. That's what it's all about, baby. I do think. I have this problem where uh, I want to be really right wing because it's cool, you know? Oh, yeah? Is that so? Well, it's cooler than being really left wing, I will say. That's that. true. It has gotten it, – it got a little It got a little too much. In because my especially as a man, there's like something appealing about like the, um, the sort of no-nonsense. Yeah, like the machismo thing. Like we're going to – um, we're going to win. We're going to take it back. We're going to throw all of our enemies in prison. We're going to be fascists. It's like, yeah, let's do it. You know, yeah. I'm not saying that I'm those things, but like, there's a part of you that's like, can see the appeal, you know? Uh, but there, I've been following this guy on Twitter, Edmund Smirk. And I don't know if anybody knows him or even cares about him, but there's an article that he wrote on American mind, the American mind. Um, a publication of the Claremont Institute. Do you know what that is, Patrick? Have you heard of the Claremont uh, Institute? No, I've heard of Claremonts before. Anyway, this article is, if you want to look it up, it'll be in the show notes, but it's called Swiftian Normality and the Freak Right. And it's honestly been challenging me on some things that I've just like taken to be true. So you probably remember when Taylor Swift and Travis Kelce were doing their whole thing, and I was like, ah, it's all a Joe Biden vaccine gay yes. psyop, you know? Yeah. Um, his whole argument in this, Article is Globo Homo. His whole argument in this article is basically it's it's not right for people to just immediately object to uh femininity, right? There's like this weird response on the right that is like freakish and not normal. Like it's okay for young women to look up to a woman who is lapsed Protestant you know, doesn't really have a bad image, you know, like when the alternative is Cardi B who's doing lap dances on the devil in her music videos, like Taylor Swift, her, yeah. whoever it was, little Nas X. There were multiple people doing lap dances with the devil recently in music videos. Um, yeah. So it's like compared to that, it's controversial like, okay, opinion. Stop it. Stop it. Right. So his whole point Stop. is like, yeah, are we really going to criticize all these women for liking a, normal 33 year old woman who seems to care about her audience seems to write good music. Mm -hmm. Like, why are we getting upset about this? And he also kind of writes about Caitlin Clark too, the basketball player, because everyone's a big fan of her. Everyone's a big fan of her. And she's kind of sidestepped any sort of, uh, landmine that she could step into. She, cause people try to bring up the race thing. Cause she's a white girl playing basketball. And she's like, I don't really care about that. She's openly Catholic. And uh, his his point is like to kind of oppose this freak right, you have to have the girl dad. Um, I don't th- I don't think he calls it the girl dad left, but I think he calls it like the the something girl dad, where it's like you need to have men that are able to embrace aspects of femininity, like a good dad would. Mm-hmm. Like if you're a dad, yeah. you hang oh, yeah. out with your daughter and you do things with your daughter and you play princess when you teach her. Um that her life will be difficult, but you do everything you can to make her life not difficult. Right. So Mm -hmm. the example that he gives is Taylor Swift's dad was a, um, was a pro 
well, not pro-Trump, but just like advise her to not come out against Trump, right? Yes. And then she does come out against Trump. And what does her dad do? Her dad hires armored cars for her to drive her around because he was worried about her safety. You know, and it's like, okay, this is the correct response. Like, this is normal. It's like, I'm going to try and create this world dad, for yeah. my daughter. And she, she might live in it. She might not. But whatever is, happens, I'm going to, like, take care of her and protect her. Um, and I think it all kind of boils down to this desire that this guy Edmund Smirk, which I don't know if that's his real name, is is talking about of the I don't think it is. I don't think it is either. <laughs> but this this need for a, a normalcy. This need for yeah. a a normal culture where um things are okay. Like kind of going along with the doctrinal purity thing, right? Just because Taylor Swift isn't a hundred percent right with where we maybe want her to be. Mm-hmm. Just because Caitlin Clark did a swear in a game you know and you can like see her in slow-mo like when it's doing the you can see her like her mouth moving even if you don't have audio of it it's like okay are we really going to get our panties in a bunch about all this stuff or are we just going to prefer it as an alternative because that is more appealing ultimately than like the total um, yeah, I think I think this is something that I think this is something that Edmund said. I remember this. Someone conver- someone brought this up as a matter of conversation, but they were like, "The right should love Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. They should love. Yes, it. they should. Because I should, and I don't. She she went from dating like a very you know not traditionally masculine man <laughs> to a very traditionally masculine man. Some might say, yeah." Yeah. And so like they have this, you know, Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince style romance. I've never seen that Star Wars movie. Yeah, it's the it's the one that's like seven point five. It's in between it's in the new or one. Harry Harry I guess it's more of a Harry Potter reference. I don't Star know what Wars that song one. is about. Madeline, can you just fact check me on that? I don't know what it's about. Yeah, we don't know. Um but no, I think I think it's they're I, there, there's two things that I want that I hold simultaneously true uh, that I think are simultaneously true is that Catholicism ought to create culture. It, but also, it baptizes culture. Mm-hmm. So it 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 does it takes into itself what is good, but it also rejects what is bad. Yeah, and I think that the the because the culture is so predominantly progressive left-leaning Catholics tend to go too far in the absorbing culture into Catholicism. And then because conservatives tend to be a little against the culture because the culture is hostile to conservatism, Mm -hmm. they tend to go in the opposite direction of, and they they tend to overemphasize the Catholicism excises the bad. And so they end up getting rid of perfectly fine things. And the, the progressive left tends to absorb not good things you know yeah it's interesting because there's a lot of i i i am i empathize so much with the the traditionalist or the conservative stance of Mm -hmm. let's let's focus on what's true good and beautiful why would we let anything in here that uh like this is michael o'brien's argument with against harry potter you know is uh just be like, I would rather feed my kids something that's 100% honey than like 95% honey, 5% piss, you know? Yeah. Or, or 75, 25, whatever the ratio is. It's like, why would I give my children anything that had any amount of piss in it? I mm-hmm. think he says it in a bit more eloquent way than how I yeah. articulated it. But I think there's, I think that's a good argument, you know, like why would we accept anything that's, especially when we're raising children and we're having communities mm-hmm. and we're trying to create some kind of bulwark against this and this is the Matt Frad argument too of I'm just gonna I'm not gonna deal with anything other than what I think is right and like I think that keeps a lot of people safe but I also think it's I unless someone is already inclined to that thought you're not really attracting anybody to your position that way yeah this is like, the old this is the old Benedict option conversation right. that we've had multiple times. Outside of the church, like Charlie Kirk has a he's a conservative commentator. He has a quote that's going around recently where he's talking about how women in their thirties are past their prime. And there's a big discussion about how women in their twenties need to get married. 
naturally no women in her in their thirties are like, hell yeah. I I, <laughs> I like I like the tune of this guy's banjo. I'm yeah. gonna go I'm gonna go clap spoons together at his at his at tur- his hoedown. <laughs> at his hoedown. Like nobody's saying that. No. Uh, they're saying, Oh, that guy's a jerk. I'm in my thirties yeah. and I feel pretty good. And uh, I'm trying to find a husband, but I haven't found one yet. And you're saying that that's my fault and I'm past my prime. Like that doesn't make me feel good. So like, that's not, that's the wrong approach. You know, Mm -hmm. I think we do that with a lot of different things in the church too. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a shame that this is how people act, but I, I get it. It comes from a, it comes from a place of like, they want to be protected from yeah. the bad things in the culture. I don't know. It's a tough question. I like a good Taylor Swift song. I enjoy it. I think She's it's, it's similar. I, I don't know. I think we just, we need to be a little more liberal <gasps> in a sense with the <laughs> liberal, with the, the, the things that we determine to be moral neutrals. I think that's, I think that's good. Yeah. The, the the thing that sparked this conversation was us looking through Reddit and they were like, yeah. is it okay to be a lawyer? It's like, the obviously, yes. It specifically. Yeah. It's like, obviously, yes. Being a lawyer. It's, it's not the being a lawyer that's a problem. It's what you do. Mm-hmm. You know? And then it's, you know, is it okay to date a woman in a wheelchair? It's like, yes. Is it a sin? It's I don't okay. think people were asking if it's no, okay no, no. to do it. <laughs> <laughs> It was something about dating a woman in a wheelchair. <laughs> it you know? was the woman in the wheelchair making that post. Like, would you date someone in a wheelchair? Would someone? Yeah. And if so, hit me up. If so, DM me right now. Um, or like, I, I saw something. Wheels. Some guy on Catholicism subreddit said recently, like, is it a sin to listen to rap music? And it's like this, the conception of sin. I think this is a beyond a Catholic issue. Because I think I think there's a specific problem in the Catholic world because we have such an emphasis on like venial sin versus mortal sin, and then there's confession. There's like concrete, distinct ways to sin and then have that sin forgiven. Yes. Whereas in Protestant circles, it's sin is like this thing that exists, but Jesus's grace kind of takes care of it, and all you got to do is kind of ask whenever. Be generally and, sorry. Be generally sorrowful for your sins. So I, I understand that there's more of, there's rightfully more of an emphasis on it in the Catholic circles, but I do think that this idea of sin bleeds over generally into the culture where things, it becomes like, is it sufficiently based to listen to this thing? Is it sufficiently matching like my social status or my political opinions to like watch this show or to enjoy this artist or to shop at this store, you know, yeah. you find people that are saying, oh, I would never go to, I can't shop at target anymore because of the, because of the transsexual, uh, swimsuit line or something. So I don't know. I don't know what's happening at target or Indigenous. I can't go to, I can't go to whole foods because everyone there still wears masks. Um, or people saying like, I can't shop really? at, I'm not going to buy black rifle coffee because it's conservative coded. Um, you know, these different things where, yeah. It's like, are people still wearing masks at Whole Foods? I would assume so. That's probably fair. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, but it feels like it's because of that, that like ancient Jewish notion of sin of you, like you've sinned and now you're completely separate from me, which I don't mm-hmm. think is the, the Christian social understanding of sin. You know, like we don't have that same sort of you disagree with me. Therefore you're out of the city walls. You know, you got to go purify yourself in the desert for 40 days before you can come back. And as Catholics, we're much less tolerant of people we consider to be in group than we are of people who we consider to be out group. We're willing to, we're willing to accept the flaws of the out outside person in hopes that they come in. And then the people who are, Oh yeah. I feel Mm -hmm. like we're not. I feel like when people, Like when people come and they're like, they want to talk about Catholicism and you don't agree on the Pope and on Mary and on this and on this and on this and on this and on this, and and you're still listening to this type of music and dressing this type of way and wearing a bikini instead of a one piece, like then it's like (laughs) so many walls get thrown up so fast of you have to act all of these ways like us. No, I think it's once, once someone, once someone is in, in the sense of like when a convert 
is in and they're like, yep, I'm becoming Catholic. Sure. The first thing is like, well, have they repented of their X, Y, Z public yeah. sin? Are they, are they really, you know, it's like once they come in, but like when, when someone is, is outside of Catholicism plainly and they have no hint and you're, they're kind of, I don't know, maybe this is just like people who have, you see this with like, someone made the point of Jordan Peterson receiving a blessing at mm -hmm. mass. Mm -hmm. People are more tolerant of Jordan Peterson getting a blessing than a gay person getting a blessing. Right. Similarly, people were much more tolerant of gay people getting blessings than Jordan Peterson getting blessings. So that right, that's right. the that's the two sides of the same coin is like There's we're more one willing solution to for stuff. Jordan Peterson. And the gay person. Well, if they're actively if they if they can yeah. be gay and be Catholic, that's yes. allowed. Um anyway, I've said I've said the word gay too many times in this podcast. Yeah. But the long the long and short of it is that Yeah we we treat other Christians and Catholics this way because we ourselves are afraid of failing an ideological purity test. And so we point out the stick, the twig, the splinter, and yeah. not the beam in our own eye. Uh, and so I, I think the, uh, the issue, I don't, there's not really a solution besides just like stop. Yeah, just be normal. Don't be so. Don't be just. Yeah, just be normal. Just let. Yeah. I, I think expand expand your horizon of what you consider to be morally neutral, like yeah. not good. Right. You don't have to think that normal cultural things are good. Mm -hmm. You can just say this is a morally neutral thing. Right. Not everything is is either good or bad. Yeah. And I think it's it's pretty damaging to see. I think Aquinas, were he alive today. First he of all, I think, he, I think he would date that girl in the wheelchair. But second of all, <laughs> I, I think he would be astonished at the uh, the strictness with which people apply categories of sin or virtue. Oh, I think, yeah. I think in Super, his mind, yeah. there would be way more things that were, were neutral. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know. I, it's an interesting... I, I encourage everybody to read the article. It's, it goes into more detail about some different things. Um he kind of talks about Taylor Swift specifically he talks about S S Taylor Swift and George Soros and Trump. And then the girl dad, right. That's what it is. The girl dad, right. Future, as opposed to the freak, right. Um, it, it's, it's an interesting article. So I would encourage people to read it, make your own opinions. I'm excited. Tell us what I'm you excited think to be a in the discord. Dad. I, yeah. Cause you are having a lady, a little girl. They were having a little girl. It's very exciting. All of my, all of my, all of my friends are are becoming girl dads. Yeah, they're all due. A, they're all due a month starting in starting in June. They're all due. So we got one in June, June, one in July, one in August. We're calling it regular girl summer. And then we're in October, and if we have a girl, then it it would extend into girl fall. Yes, you know what I mean. It would keep girl going. fall. Um, I don't know if we're having a girl. I've had a I had a dream. I had a vision. That we were having mm -hmm. a girl. Ooh. Um, they could be friends. They could be friends. I mean, they could be friends if they were to. Different genders can be friends with each other, Patrick. Nope. No, it's in the book. It's to sin. They can't. It's in the Bible. They can't be yeah. friends. Oh, man. Yeah. That's that's a fun one. We get that one all the time. Can men and women yeah. be friends? Yeah, no. until one of you gets married. Men and women can't be friends. It's best to not even try. You can be coworkers. You can be neighbors, but you cannot be friends with a woman. <laughs> Even if you're a woman. Even if you're a woman. I think that would solve a lot of problems, actually. No one hates women more than other women. I've seen I've this. Heard, I have I've seen it firsthand. I've as seen well. it I've seen it happen. It's it's a it's a it's a darn shame. It's and scary. and it's a darn shame. And feminists know this. They say this all the time. Like, let's unite. Let's like let's put aside our differences and then they do the doctrinal purity thing where they see a woman who's like, has like a vaguely conservative or like has a, you know, two kids instead of none, two kids instead of three hamsters or something. They're like, you're a traitor to the cause. And it's like, Oh gosh. Think about, think about the most hated person by all the feminists. JK Rowling. Wow. Yeah. And what is she British? What can I tell you? See, you're a wizard, Ari. <laughs> who was I? Who was I? Who was I thinking of when I? 
Do you think Hogwarts got a good dentist? My teeth are all messed up because <laughs> I've got no. <laughs> you know what? I, you know how they talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The flight attendant on the flight from Israel to London did talk like that. She did. Or, yeah, she she straight up did, and I was like, Gosh. "This is." They were wonderful. The fake. Virgin Airlines flight crew. Oh, thank they were God. so nice. Thank they gave God me so much people. alcohol. They really did. It was we got just such great. such big cups of wine on the plane. Oh my gosh, it was awful. Yeah, and I asked, I, I asked him, I was like, "Is this free?" He goes, "Yeah, mate, it's free." I was like, oh. I, I was crying. like, I can just have more of this. They're like, I "Yeah, man, you're not in America crying. anymore. We're not charging like, you for anything." Sick, dude. I love flying over the Atlantic Ocean. We have free healthcare in the back of the plane. <laughs> We've got a <laughs> dentist on board. <laughs> no, not a dentist. They have like a surgeon or something. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. It's like they get, yeah. Anyway, that's it for us. Um, this is proof that I've been to D- London right there. Yep. Little, little clock that says it's London time. It's London time. It's actually right now. I have it set to London time. You uh, do? It is. No, it, there's no batteries in here. But oh, okay. um, That'd be yeah, fun to be, have it set to London time. I that's kind of cute, you know? But I don't know. I don't, because they're on the metric system, so I need a different clock, I think. <laughs> Oh uh, man, that's so. Uh, Discord bit.ly slash crunch discord. Let us know what you thought about our discussion today, uh, and we'd love to hear from you. And if you've never introduced yourself, please do because I think we have a, a thousand one hundred and some people in the Discord, and oh, yeah. I know that not all of you are regular participants in conversation. So, hop in, say what's up, tell us what you thought about this episode specifically. Make a friend. Being Make normal. A, Make a joke. Talk about how he thought it was crazy that Patrick said that thing about that marginalized group of people. It's going to be yeah. a fun time. Uh, but that all he must not, he must not like them very much. Yes. Um, and Patrick, is there anything else that you got for the people? So if we can make a little pad that charges an iPhone yeah. without wires, why can't we make one that charges nations? Thank you all for listening. Please pray for us. We will be praying for you, and we will see you all next time. What if we turn Oklahoma into a battery? It already is. <laughs> He can both have fields with two wires that spin around. Someone's got to take care of him. <laughs> bam, bam, bam.